Welcome back. It's Charter California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're shifting gears a bit. A different Scripps professor is here. Her name is Mary McNaughton. She is an art history professor at Scripps College. She is also the director of the Ruth Chandler Williamson Gallery. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you being here on the program. And I want to speak with you more about the area of conservation. I mentioned to you that last night, I'm not kidding you, I was working with my sixth grade daughter on a paper about the advantages and disadvantages of art conservation. And I learned that, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 years ago, conservation maybe not uh, the right thing to do. What do you tell us about that? Well, conservation is a field that is always changing. Right. And uh, Scripps College is a place where students can pursue it at the undergraduate level, right. which is a rare opportunity. It's actually the only place west of the Mississippi, as I understand it, or on the west coast, I should say, that offers a degree in art conservation. Right, in a, a major in, right. at the undergraduate level. Um, and there are only four programs at the graduate level where you can study this in the United States. And so whether one should conserve or not conserve is a question that conservators everywhere uh, think about continually and revise their ideas. Um, it used to be that art objects were restored. In mm. other words, the um, goal was to take the work back to its original state, when of course we know that's impossible. So now the goal is rather to uh, stop uh, de deleterious change right. Um, and to protect the work so that it can be enjoyed, it can be studied, and it can be used. So that's our goal at Scripps, where our permanent collection is for teaching purposes. And what I learned through my sixth grade daughter is the question becomes, if you do any restoration, are you changing the intent of the artist? Will the message be different as received by the viewer of the work of art? But as you describe it, if you're just trying to prevent deterioration, not as much? Right. You uh, also can treat the work so that from a distance, problems that were very obvious uh, and uh, hindered the enjoyment of the object can be muted. But if you get close to the object, mm -hmm. you will see the history of its treatment. So it's a kind of six foot, six inch rule. So. I like that. What about scientific advancements? I have to think, as I learned from my daughter a hundred years ago, the restorers didn't realize that some of the materials they were using actually were deleterious, as you say, to the underlying work. Mm -hmm. Now I would presume that science has taught us the best tools to use in restoration. Science has made huge progress in conservation and now conservators try to use um, techniques and materials that can be reversed in the future so that what you do isn't permanent and 50 years from now when it's determined that that wasn't the best method or the best treatment something else can be done. I want to get a sense about what's happening at Scripps College because who knew that Scripps would be one of the premier institutions for art conservation and restoration. I mentioned to you last year I had the honor of going to Taiwan and I went to their National Museum and saw some just majestic, magnificent pieces of art. You may or may not know this, but one of their crown jewels is a cabbage, this, this piece of it's an artistic piece of cabbage. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. made of jade. It is lines and lines for this piece of cabbage. But be that as it may, it appears that uh, Scripps has a special expertise in uh, Chinese art. We do have an extraordinary collection that's international. And so it goes with an increasingly globalized curriculum sure. that we're offering. We have Chinese paintings, Chinese textiles, Japanese prints, American paintings, international ceramics so it's a wonderful array of different kinds of objects for students to study they're examples of material culture so whether you're studying history or science or art all of these objects have stories to tell that's what i love about art is if you can really just step back for a second and envision imagine in your own mind what this one piece of art is telling us about the time, the era, the artist. You know, let your imagination run wild 
and it is it, it, it's it's enjoyable it's so true and the other thing we're offering is opportunities for students to work with professional conservators right. on objects in our permanent collection to gain valuable experience learning how to document how to prepare condition reports and in some cases even how to do treatments and this prepares them for graduate school as I mentioned there are only four programs in the United States NYU University of Delaware State University of New York at Buffalo and here the only graduate program on the West Coast is UCLA Getty program in conservation which focuses on ethnographic art which is which would be say African art oceanic Ethno art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Native American art and archaeological materials so this is uh, a really specialized area so we tell our students to be competitive for graduate school they need to have two full years of chemistry one year of general chemistry think about that think about that an art aficionado if they want to pursue conservation need to be chemists yes what does that tell us well, about the future of our conservation you're bridging you're bridging right. science humanities and art in this major so you take two years of chemistry that's got to cause a lot of agita <laughs> for some of these artists you know you, they wouldn't expect they'd have to be uh, chemists themselves it's a special kind of student but mm -hmm. we have several who've been drawn to this over the years and many more are coming to Scripps because of this major so archaeology you take courses in Roman art and archaeology or Greek art and archaeology um, we have a course that's offered this spring called Archaeological Conservation in the Tomb of King Midas. I want to go to Scripps, <laughs> but I'm a guy, so that's difficult. But I can still... Wait, don't you allow some of the men from the other colleges yes, to absolutely. take? Yes, absolutely. If so you I go to take... CMC or Pomona okay. or Harvey Mudd, you can take art conservation courses at Scripps. Um, give us a sense of what you've seen over the last... You've been at Scripps since the 80s in terms of art conservation. Where have we gone from almost you know over 30 years ago well we have a wonderful advanced science program where st uh, students are coming in and getting really intensive courses in chemistry biology and physics in their first year and many of them come in thinking I want to be a doctor I want to be a research scientist and after two years they think I really like humanities too I'd like to do something mm -hmm. that works in the space between science and humanities and art conservation is perfectly situated that way. And in addition to Scripps's uh, gallery that focuses upon Asian art, who knew there's an Andy Warhol yes. collection at Scripps College? How did that happen? Well, we do exhibitions each year that may touch on Asian, European, or American art, and especially contemporary art. Um, we are very fortunate to receive, among some other college and university museums, a donation, a two-part donation that the Warhol Foundation is given. First, we receive photographs, 8 by 10 uh, gelatin silver prints and Polaroids that Andy Warhol used in creating his portraits. And now we've received uh, a group of seven big, bright, brilliant, screen prints that Leave it are... to an artist to be able to <laughs> use such alliterative <laughs> words to describe the art. They're Continue. really exciting. So for students who are studying printmaking, which we teach at Scripps, um, or art history, and Warhol is certainly a key figure Ooh. in the last 50 years, these are extraordinary opportunities for them to look uh, at the actual objects that I he created. I have a cousin who I mentioned, John Griswold, who's a conservationist. I've been to his studio. It is remarkable what can be done and the level of meticulous work is so dramatic and so important and I want right. to thank you for what you're doing for the art thank world you. and for Scripps College we have been speaking with Mary McNaughton she is the director of the Ruth Chandler Williamson Gallery and an art history professor at Scripps I'm Brad Pomerantz you've been watching Charter California Edition